You okay, everyone okay? Good? Go like this. <sighs> Come on, go for it. Come on. It's okay. It's okay to be childlike. That's how you get into heaven. It's a hint. Uh, but yeah, go again. <sighs> Try it. All right. Give me a second. <laughs> Someone's going for it. Is that my son? All right. You know, you breathe in and out. And one of my biggest thank yous to the Lord is today, you will never have this day again. It's a gift from God. Because we get so used to the most simple things that we just have and we get breathing, tasting, the most the normal everyday things that we uh, forget to have that glad heart over these kind of things. Literally, you're breathing, you're able to get here, you're able to uh, do something with today that you have, that you'll never have again. Isn't that amazing? So I want you now... Again, breathe in and out, enjoying that you have breath and life, and you say to God, thank you for this day that you have made. And then what you do next is, is a choice. It's not feelings-based, it's a choice, and the feelings come with it, or you let your feelings control you. It's up to you. But you choose, since this is the day that the Lord has made, I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. It's a choice. You let the day rule you and master you if you want, and look at all the negative stuff that's going on. Oh, I don't know, this happened. There was a guy that cut me off. All right, pray for him. <laughs> you know? Or you let the other guy's stuff or the thing that happened ruin the rest of your day because you choose to. Realize that God has given us, especially those who have the Spirit of God inside them, believers. We have been given a spirit of self-control. We can choose to either yield to the Spirit or to the flesh. We are not bound by the flesh like a non-believer who has no, not the Spirit of God in them. So we literally are able to do that. That's amazing. It's a gift from God. But it takes practice. It doesn't just happen. You practice every day. It says in the Bible that deny yourself, take up your cross daily and follow me. What did they do on a cross? Kill people. So what is it telling you? Deny yourself that's telling you not to walk in what's available for you to walk in. The truth of who you were called to be. What did Jesus inherited on your behalf? Deny anything that's trying to steal that from you because only Satan will do that. And if you bow down to the way Satan's thinking. And he only can speak into the flesh to get you to bow down. So if you live in the flesh, you will not walk in the spirit. So that's why it says walk in the spirit. He says this to Christians. Walk, choose to walk in the spirit so you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Who's doing the choosing to walk in what? It's not God. It's you. He already done his bit. And empowered you to do it, but it takes practice. So I want to encourage you, this was not part of the message, but be careful of not trying to do Christianity in the flesh. You can. 90% of Christians are doing it in the flesh. It's harder that way. It's miserable that way. That's why you say the Bible says the, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And you see many Christians, what? I just think you need some joy of the Lord. It's because we're walking in the flesh. There it's miserable. I get miserable. We all get miserable there. That's where anxiousness is. Fear is everything that is opposite to when you read about the fruit of the Spirit, the characteristics of the Holy Spirit which you've become one with. He says anyone who's, self, who's joined themselves in the Lord has become one with the Lord. Every characteristic is there, is yours. You've become one with Him. When you sing those characteristics, be the opposite. Selfishness instead of selflessness. Depression instead of peace. What are you walking in? The flesh. And we can do this. I can do this. I can go for a week with walking in the flesh and go, oh. but if you learn to snap out of it and go, wait a minute, I'm not going to walk in the flesh. I'm going to walk in the spirit. It's not some feeling that you feel, oh, no, I feel like I'm walking in the spirit. It's a choice. We've got to get out... We've made it really weird, Christianity. Through the years, through different movements, they mean well, nothing against them in that sense. But remember, guys, you know, there's people that, oh, wait, uh, put, the, put the piano louder, put it lower, wait, let the atmosphere, yes, now change the show. Do you think Jesus had a band following him? <laughs> wait, I can't do miracles right now. The, the song is not right. Lift it up, hold, yeah, keep that word, yes, keep that, play that piano, yeah, mm hmm. What have we done? It's simple. So even walking in the Spirit, we've made it some... Oh, oh, oh. No, you just walk in the Spirit. 
the choice. Simple, okay? I'm telling you, I've been around for a while in the sense of being in different movements and different people, beautiful people, see? I'm not those kind of guys that we're going to like, put them down, all right? But things like in the Bible, right, it says to us that God has given us a spirit of self-control. In what? So can a Christian say, I couldn't control myself? Think about it, can you? And I'm talking about can you say, of course you can. But can you do it as an excuse and it's valid in the Lord? Yes or no? No. You see the difference now? Now, once you come to the truth of this and you don't make excuses and you go, oh, actually it does say that. Actually, God does say that. Does allow us that. Does empower us for that. Then your excuses go out, out of the you know, door. And some people don't like that. They get defensive. Yeah, but we're only human. No, you're not. You've been born again. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. If you want to walk in the flesh, humanity, go for it. But I'm telling you there's a better way. The Bible says there's a better way. And the truth will make us free. So when you start being honest with yourself, the most is to be honest with ourselves. No matter how much you don't want to hear that about you, be honest about yourself. And then God transforms you because you've allowed Him to. Because pride causes us to make excuses. Pride doesn't want to go there. No, no, it's not me. It's because my husband, my wife, it's because my boss is... Uh, no, it's because you're choosing to be everything you're being... There is no excuse. What they're being like is they're being like, no doubt. And it's hurtful. But how you're choosing to react is you. It's me. And if we choose to be honest about that, then there's opportunity for God to transform us. Why? Because He resists the proud. He resists pride. Pride makes Him... Like, it can't come close to you in the sense of that area to make you transformed. But hum humility is irresistible to Him. Humility draws Him to that area because you're not fluffing it up, you're not putting excuses, you're not pointing fingers to other, on other people. You're saying, I've been like this. Change me, God. It's not okay. And you, shouldn't, you don't need to go, I've been like this, and you beat yourself up for a week about it. I've been like this. Change me, Lord. That means something because your heart's speaking now. It's not just an emotion thing. Because I've seen people get, as well, movements where they're getting touched and they're crying, they're on their knees, blah, blah, blah. The next day, they're exactly the same. It's not about the crying. It's sincere about the crying. They're being touched by God. But to change is a choice. It's not, I've been touched. Good. Now change. We'll get into the message. <laughs> you okay? I want to read you something that came to me to read. Don't, don't, don't lose your, um, your heart from hearing what the Lord would say to you with whatever's going to come out. I'm just, I just go, okay? We're trying to figure me out. We're trying to be, I don't like his tone. I don't like, all right, cool, sorry. But let that go. Judge me later. But at least still be open to hear something from the Lord. And then maybe... I, you don't like the way I bring it out. That's no problem. You know, that's how God made me and I'll work on the things I need working on. And maybe you work on some things that you need to work on. <laughs> and don't worry about that. Don't let that stop you from hearing what the Spirit wants to say to you. That's why some things come out that I don't plan because there's people, God knows His people. He's in love with you. And He has things He wants to say to you. And there could be passages that I'll bring out and things that I'll be focusing on that you're like... That's not really, I'm not getting something out of that because that's not for you. But the beginning bit that I said maybe was for you. You get it? So you just rejoice that people are hearing the word of God and you take what you can and grow in it. Tell God, speak to me. Now help me take what I can take from this message. Don't worry about me. Who's, who's me? Yeah, hear the Lord and anything I'll say, just hear. If it's in the Bible, just say, God, is that truly what that meant? You speak to God. He's alive. He's in you. You know this. He loves you. He loves you. But I got this scripture I wanted to read again for whatever it means for you. Can I have some water, please? Thank you. Sorry, when I start speaking and speaking and speaking, saliva is gone and then I don't have any more saliva left. <laughs> You're okay? Good. I'm seeing it's better. It's better. At the beginning when I come up, I can see the stiffness on some people. They're like, who is this guy? I must judge him to see. And then I see that, okay, relax, it's okay. Thank you, sir. This is the passage. I charge you, oh, sorry. 
Oh, sorry, man. I didn't even give you the scriptures. But it doesn't matter. Uh, meaning, I'm still going to preach the scriptures. No, it doesn't matter about scriptures. It matters. But um, I was meant to give him some of the scriptures so he can put them up. So some will come up late. doesn't matter. Meaning, don't get distracted from that. Still hear the message. Uh, to, it's 2 Timothy chapter three verse, no, chapter 4 from verse 1. Just really quickly, this is a, the sum that I got there. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. That's what I'm going to do. Okay? Just letting you know it's going to go in all those places. Um, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they want someone to tickle their ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure affliction, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. So, I just wanted to share that before I go because I just had to do that. Um, the, I was waiting for the Lord to give me the message for today and it was kind of lingering last night and then all of the message came last night and then I put it down this morning. That's why I didn't send him scriptures. But uh, I want to tell you a few of the things that God has been emphasizing. Um, I've said this before here that I come as a watchman, meaning I have um, perceived things from the Lord, other things I've heard and saw and studied and investigated, and I need to say them because God cares about you. Yes? He loves you. And so if I'm seeing uh, a wolf coming to hurt God's people, a lion coming to hurt God's people, and I don't say anything because I don't want to you know, hurt your feelings and disturb your comforts, would you be happy with me for not telling you? I saw it, but I couldn't say it. I wouldn't say it. That's wrong of me, right? So I'd rather say it, even if you don't like what I'm going to say, okay? For you, for your sake. So uh, it's okay to stone the messenger later. I go to heaven quicker. <laughs> okay. God is looking. Look, sorry. What I've been getting and seeing, and oh, it's obvious right now more than ever, even though I've been saying this for over two and a half years now, uh, more difficult times are coming. So... Um, you know why it's called good news, guys? Do you know why the gospel, the word gospel, is called good news? Because it was bad news. That's why it's good news. Yeah? So I just wanted to emphasize that for a second because we forget why it's called good news. It doesn't mean you're not going to go through stuff. But because we were heading to hell, because we were not going to be with God, Jesus came and brought some good news. Now you can. You get the difference? Now you understand why it's actually called the gospel, the good news. If you don't tell them, people, that there was actually bad news, then they don't understand, hey, we've got to preach the gospel. What are you talking about? What does that ever mean? Because there was bad news, we need to bring, tell the people the good news. So, again, when we say good news, it doesn't mean everything's going to be very cruisy and nice and blah, 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 because what Jesus did. In fact, we're going to see through Scripture today that He never said that. We did. He never said that. Sometimes preachers do. Uh, Bible colleges do. They teach this bless me gospel where you come into the Lord and He will bless you. He'll take care of you. He will protect you. He will do, 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 do you. And He'll make your dreams come true. Like He loves you and He made you the way you, And you dream and He will bring your dreams together. There's truth in all of that. Some of it. But there's also, you'll go through struggles and suffer and trials and tribulation. Why don't you say that bit to the people, man? Be honest with them. So what happens is when we teach them one side of the message of Jesus, the lamb side, but no lion, the goodness, but not the severity of the Lord, then when something starts going bad and they're calling on Jesus like they're genie, give me this, make everything better, stop everything, blah, blah, blah. Do you think they're not asking for the war to stop in Ukraine? You think they're not asking for that? They are. And if they think that God is a yes sir God, then they will walk away from God because this genie, that they met up in their own heads and called him, genie, called him Jesus. Uh, it's not fulfilling their dreams, their desires, their prayers. You get it? Oh, I don't want him then. I'm going to go to another God. To another belief. And that's what happens. 
We need to say the truth because it's just the truth. That's it. There's nothing else. It's the truth. And, that, and who God is is who He is. Take Him or leave Him. That's who He is. We don't need to change Him and shape Him so we can make Him sound more you know, inviting to everybody. There is ministers right now, so-called ministers, saying, He, she, God. That's what they're saying. He, she, God. Because God is transgender. He changes genders. And they'll bring passages and twist them to make them sure they fit these things. Why? Because they're making God in their image. Why? Because that's the new fashion now. We've got to go with whatever the new fashion is. So we've got to stand on truth because times are coming and they're going to get worse. Where if you're not standing on truth, guys, the wind will blow. It says it in the Bible. They build their house, one on the sand, one on the rock. And it says the same thing happens to both of them. The storm comes, the wind blows to both of them. He didn't say, but he didn't blow to the one that was on the rock because he found himself on Jesus, so there was no tribulation and no difficult times. He said the wind blows on both of them. But one stood the attack, stood the difficulty. We were born to, to walk while the wind's blowing and the storm's coming and going and grabbing hands of those who don't have Jesus and hold them firm because we're standing on Jesus and telling him, come to Jesus. He'll hold you together when you're falling apart because economic collapses are coming and all this other stuff that's going to go on and everyone's going to fall apart because they found themselves on the economy in what they had instead of on Jesus. Christians and non-Christians, this is happening to them. And it's a time where we need to make sure that we're building and standing on the rock because more wind is coming, more storms are coming. And please, I'll tell you this post that I wrote and I'll tell you my heart behind the post. God is looking for those He can use to shine through during these even darker days which are coming. He's not looking at those whose heart is more selfishly focused on escaping than shining. Did you hear that, guys? Do you understand what I mean by that? For those of you that don't, I don't mind where you stand with pre-tribulation rapture. It's no problem. I'm just saying there's people that are more focused on that. If it happens, it happens. No problem. But don't be so focused on that's your focus where you're not focusing on what the Lord wants to do with you and through you while or until that happens. And that's what we've got to be focused on. You understand? And I've seen some people have an unhealthy thing about, oh, I'm going to be taken away. I'm going to... Okay, what if not? First of all, second of all, what if it's not at now and things are going to get worse before we get taken away? What if? If you're not emotionally aligned with the Lord in this, you're going to fall apart because you're planning any time now, any moment, any time is coming, any moment is coming now. All right, calm down, dude. What did he say? He said, be obsessed with my coming. No, he said, occupy until I come. Let's not have an unhealthy, this, like an idol. Again, I don't mind which one everyone stands with. It doesn't matter. Because you know, that doesn't matter for you to be part of it. What matters is you love the Lord, love people, have a heart that's ready, you know. But make sure that you're going, Lord, if economic collapses come, because there is wicked people ruling right now, guys. It's just a, ra a fact. If you can't see it until now, I'm like, Wow. There is wicked people ruling and they have an agenda by 2030 to bring some really evil things on the world. While they smile and make it look like they're being kind. It's about climate change. It's about the overpopulation, really. The whole population can easily fit in Africa. The world population can live in Africa with backyard, front yard, as much crops as you want because you plant them. You drill enough down the earth, you'll have water coming like this. You don't have to drill as deep as oil to get oil. Then you have to drill. You, in other words, you drill shorter distance to get water in the core of the earth. If you go down, drill into the earth. There's so many amazing things we can do. But there is a people and the ones who are leading these things who have infiltrated governments, guys. And it's been happening for years. Have an agenda. And these guys literally serve Satan. And when I talk like this, I have Christians going... Ugh. I'm thinking, are you serious? If anyone shouldn't go, ah, ah, is Christians. Why? Because we have a book that tells us the kings of the earth will come and attack Jesus. 
After the, the 1,000 year reign, he says, I know you might not know what I'm talking about, some of you, it doesn't matter. The point is, he says that when Satan comes out of the abyss, after he's been chained up, he's going to go to around the earth and get the kings, this is the presidents, guys, the leaders around the world, bring them together to do what? To make war against Jesus and his people. What? Do you think he's not doing that now? Do you think he's not infiltrating governments and leaders and world leaders to do this? And we're not surprised. Come on, that's conspiracy theories. Everything, at least I posted and other friends of mine have posted, has been facts after fact after fact for two and a half years, trying to warn people and help them. People are going to need our rock more than ever. More than ever. So you first have to stay, get stable on him, on our Jesus. So you're not being shaken when the storms come even more. They have this thing coming. And I'm not going to not tell you that. They have many things prepared to do. I hope that God puts his hand and stops it somewhere down the line before it all comes to pass. Because there is one time coming, as we know in the Bible, he says that the Antichrist will come. He will sit on the throne. There will be a one world government. You can't buy or sell unless you have the mark. You know that, yeah? On the forehead or on the right hand. We know there's going to be this thing that we have to put into your skin. It says, in the skin. The King James actually says, in the hand. Or in the forehead. And unless you have that, you can't buy or sell. They're trying to do a digital currency where unless you have submitted to the, what they wanted you to do, like what is happening in China, which is the Chinese Communist Party that's ruling China, they want to bring that style of government all over the world, around the globe. It's slowly happening. And if they're not being a good boy and good girl, they're seizing their money and they can't do transactions and buy or sell. It's already had this template. Why? Because Satan is the same. He's doing this way. It looks very familiar, what we read. Because he's already trying to implement and do this thing. And we can't be going, no, no, it's not happening, it's not happening. Yes, it is. The Bible tells us it's going to happen. Now, if it's now or not, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. There's a lot of elements of it that it could be 100% now, but there's been similar things in the past, so I don't know. I'm waiting for a few more things to go, okay, now it's this next and the temple will be built. And... But my message for you today is, listen, the wind's going to blow more. They're going to announce more variants and another virus and all that kind of stuff. It's going to happen. You watch. It's not about is it real, is it not real, this thing, the virus and stuff. It's about what they do is they make sure that real or not, what they're doing with this stuff is because what they want you to do is run to their answer when these things are proclaimed. And their answer was this. And their answer is going to be this again. And I'm saying to you, if they're saying that, and the news you're watching says, go do it, and the politician you're listening to says, go do it, change politician, change the news you're watching, because you're literally being brainwashed. You're watching one of their tools that gets the people conditioned. I'll get back to this. See, one is looking, I'll read it again, God is looking for those he can use to shine through during, through, during these even darker days which are coming. He's not looking at those whose heart is more selfishly focused on escaping than shining. See, one is looking to how his or her own, to his own or his desires, how they can be met, driven by a heart of selfishness. The other man or woman is after God's own heart, looking to be made available to God, to be a helping hand, to be taken out of his own comforts, to put their hand to the plow, being useful, being a useful blessing in the hand of God. To this world full of people that God loves which are in desperate spiritual need and don't know it full of fear and hopelessness which is increasing for God so love the again for God so love the he still loves the world he still loves the people he still loves them and you're the one he wants to use to love them for him Uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. You are the light of the world. This is Jesus speaking. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. 
nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket or cover it, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. What are they going to see? Your good works. And why are they going to glorify your Father which is in heaven? Because you are unashamedly doing it openly. It's because of Jesus I do what I do. It's because of Jesus I run when calamity happens to the calamity to see how I can help. I don't run away. Take me, Lord, take me. He saved us for a reason, guys. It wasn't just so he can have us. Of course, of course, that's one of the reasons. But so we can go back out there and help other people come to know him. They're going to be shaken like you've never seen. And any Christian that really is not holding and growing their relationship with Jesus and their devotion with Jesus is going to be shaken with them. And you know what's going to happen when you get shaken? If you're not holding on to Jesus, you're going to bow down to other voices and what they're saying is the answer for you to do so you can be okay. Did you know that they light, you know, in Brazil, there's a statue of Jesus? Massive one. And they lit up saying, uh, on Jesus, look at this blasphemous stuff. Of course, it's not Jesus, it's just an image, it's a statue. But the point is, look what they were mocking. They, Satan loves mocking Jesus, obviously. Okay? And I'll speak about that another day more. But they lit up saying, vaccines save lives on Jesus' statue. Now, why? Because they took the quote that says, Jesus saves lives. And they mocked it and rubbed that instead which was a tool that he was using as an answer for people to run to so they can be harmed. And they're going to do it again. doesn't matter where you stand on it. It is. God told me before even they tossed, they announced anything, how it was going to play out. And I'm watching it happen. I'm trying to speak up. And people say, are you, are you hurting people? You're going to put people in harm if you say things like this. No, I'm trying to save people from harm. Just read it. Listen to these doctors, not the ones they're silencing. Psalm 23, 1 to 6. A Psalm of David. Psalm 23, 1 to 6. A Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not, I shall not want, or I sh I want, I'm not going to be in need of anything. Hey, the Lord is your shepherd. The times that are coming, of course, even now. But the times that are coming, no matter what they look like, the Lord is my shepherd. Get so, um, know that. Past here. Past Sunday. Because there's also Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, da, 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 da. And let it be that your shepherd, you wake up, you go, you gave me this day, Monday. I never had this Monday before. Thank you, Lord. Grow me, change me, transform me, rebuke me, cut things that you want to cut off me. Put in me what you want to put in me. I'm yours. And use me. And do you know what use me might mean that day? Just pay for the groceries of someone that was just about to pay for something. If you can afford it. Buy a coffee for somebody. And just say, hey, it's because of Jesus I did this. He loves you. Don't go, I can't say that. I can't say that, really? Are you ashamed of him? You should look into your heart. Why wouldn't you say that? They're not ashamed of doing music awards and dancing with devils on the music awards and doing all these demonic satanic rituals everywhere in sports we're talking about commonwealth games olympic games opening grand opening of tunnels i think it was in germany or sweden or whatever it was and there's full-on witchcraft ceremony they're unashamed about going Whoa. you see the music artists they're going to concerts and they're doing this symbol i'm just doing it so you can understand the triangle symbol which is talking about the illuminati and talking about the all-seeing eye to do with lucifer They'll, they'll hold one of their eyes closed because he's talking about the all-seeing eye. They'll do this and put it on their eye. I'm just showing you. Don't worry. And he's talking about the 666 people. Christians even are, are participating in yoga where they stand. And again, just so I can show you, they'll close their hands like this because he talks about the all-seeing eye and the 666. And they'll sit there meditating. And they think this doesn't belong to Satan because they have no idea. And if you look at the symbolism of yoga of the kundalini that enlightens you and opens up your third eye, supposedly. It literally takes them deeper and deeper in the demonic. 
but it has to look like an angel of light. It has to look like, no, it's nothing. It's something extreme. It's not a big deal. And the symbolism is a snake, the Kundalini. A snake opening up their chakras and coming up to the third eye so they can be enlightened. And like I've done a video about, they're not being enlightened, they're being darkened by the deceiver himself. They're getting deeper and deeper, opening up their soul to the demonic. And they even tell me sometimes, I'm not think when I'm meditating, I don't think about, yes, I do yoga, but when I'm meditating, I'm thinking about Jesus. Which Jesus are you talking about? The one I made up in my own image and likeness. That's the reality. They make up their own Jesuses that suits what's okay and not okay because I don't like what Jesus said there. This one I'm okay with. Who are we to say what we're okay with or not? If Jesus is our Lord, then he's our boss, yes or no? That's what Lord means. If he's not your Lord, or not our Lord, then we should, should stop saying he's our Lord. I like Jesus. Just say that. I believe he's real. Good. But he's not my Lord. Why? Because when it comes to the crunch, when he tells me to do something that I want to do differently, I'm the boss. I am Lord. I bow down to me, and my will, and my way. But I sing Jesus is Lord on Sunday. It's cool. I like some of the songs. We make a miracle worker. Oh my Lord. Really? Is he? You know, one time the Lord told me lying while you're singing is no different than lying when you're not singing. <laughs> I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm not putting anybody down here, guys. I've been like this. I was double, you know, struggling with that life and this life. I'm, I'm with you. I'm here. And I just want to go to you. There's nothing that life with its short-term little satisfactions is going to anything be happy about when you get out of it. When you look back at it and go, wow, I compromise my life with the Lord and my journey with the Lord and my yes to the Lord for this. But you don't see it at the moment when you're being tempted with it. You just go along with it. And you're eating from the pig food that Satan's giving you instead of the banquet that Jesus has for you. For the short-term fleshy satisfaction that you're going to get. That's all it is, man. Short-term with these liars and this uh, mocking, especially our young, signs thrown out of the window, and now it's whatever you were born. If you were born and you believe you were born a cat in a boy's body, you are a cat. In Australia, the teachers are told not to tell any, say anything against the kids if they're coming believing they're the cat and they're purring in the, in the classroom. This is happening in Australia. Go, can you imagine being the teacher? Now we're going to learn. <laughs> I'm like, what the? Who am I teaching? And what is this? This is science. And the kids, it's a scientific reality. Studies have been done. Have you even looked at what the studies they look for to make the study? No. That's why they say that. Because it's garbage studies. And scientists were always purchased when it was needed. Scientists and doctors were saying how good smoking tobacco is for you. Smoke. There was even an advertisement with a woman pregnant saying, most women prefer... I, look, I know I look pregnant, that's why I'm doing it. I, I, grew, my, I grew my stomach just for today. Okay, now watch. She's, the, the picture of a woman pregnant and uh, go check out Google the old advertising on cigarettes. And he said, talks about how the doctors prefer this one and that the, the one women, pregnant women crave. And now what do we say? Those doctors were wrong. Those scientists were wrong. How come they were, about to, they were able to do this and advertise it in... Uh, and no government stopped it, no nothing, because the government paid enough? Shh, they silenced themselves. Doctors paid enough? Doctors will say exactly what you want to hear. And that's why you say, but the doctors, the, the doctors that they knew said it's okay to take it. What do you think they did with them? Scientists were saying, really? Stop falling for it, guys. Because more of this is coming. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Just do this, alright? I have already passed two hours. I'm meant to finish already, aren't I? <laughs> Sorry, guys. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lay down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. When he wrote things like this, guys, he was being chased to be killed. David, <laughs> because you've got to imagine when he's writing this, he's being chased to be murdered by people he loves, like the king he was serving. 
And he's right, and he's saying, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. And he's in a cave. Cold in a cave, looking to where he's going to hide next because they're looking to kill him with the whole army. Can you believe this? And he writes things like this. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. That's what He's going to do with you. When these things are coming down and they get worse and the storms come, it's going to be scary because we still have flesh on us. So you're going to feel it. But then you go, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And you decree His truth. Just like He was scared and people were chasing Him and storms were coming to attack David and He chooses and stops. And when He wasn't praying out of anxiousness, Oh Lord, save us! Oh Lord, change us! He wasn't doing that. Because that's prayer of fear. He was praying worship and praise of confidence. I, should not be, I won't be in want. You make me lay down in green pastures. You put me beside still waters. Well, for who? Not for me. For your name's sake. Why? Because he called you. You're a Christ one. You're a Christ-like one. You carry his name. It doesn't mean there won't be a cave. And that's not as comfortable as our houses with the heating. You get it? He restores my soul. He leads me to the, in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. People are going to kill me. No, no, pff, even though I walk through that valley. This is not a funeral scripture. This guy was alive saying this. Even if I walk through the valley of people trying to kill me. That's what he's saying. I will no fear no evil. Why? Why? For you are... Is He with you? Is He for you? That's what you remind yourself of. When things get harder, He is with me. He's in me. He's even greater with you than He was with David because He's in you guys. Not just with you. He says, I will be in them. They will be my God. I will be their God. They will be my people. He restores myself. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Listen to what he wants to do with Christians. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. When the tribulation comes, the storms come, he's going to want you to go to them. Go into the storm. Why? Because you're unshakable. You're, you were made for the storm. You get the difference? Why He plucked you out of darkness into His light? You were made for the storm. He's building up a people that when everyone wants to run away and hide, you're running to them, looking for people you can help in the midst of the storm because you're not looking for your own safety. You're not trying to save your life. That's another scripture. Whoever tries to save their life will lose it. Whoever will lose their life for my sake and the Gospels will find it. What's the worst that can do to us, guys? What's the worst that can happen? Death. Woohoo! <laughs> Are you serious? Christians, if we die, what happens? So what are you worried about? It's like, you're going to kill me? <laughs> kill me! You get it? We sound crazy. We run to the sword. No problem, man. As long as he doesn't get the sword, I protect his life. You can kill me because I know where I'm going. He needs some time to get to Jesus. You can kill me. It sounds crazy, huh? That's how we're meant to be. Crazy. Crazy and foolish to how we sound to the world. Or do we sound just like it? And it will show when the time comes and the crunch comes and the difficulty comes who we sound like and who we act like. And it's good to practice from now by not being ashamed of Jesus in front of everybody. At the Super Bowl in America, they always had commercials and had very, at the very um, expensive commercials for people to pay to actually advertise at the Super Bowl because it's thousands and thousands of people watching the game. And to pay for advertising, it's a big deal. And they will advertise anything from demonic things to you know, worldly things to just normal advertising, whatever. Just recently at the Super Bowl, what I heard was they had two advertisements of Christian ones. Someone or an organization or people came together, put money, they paid how expensive it is to put something. And look what he said. They showed crimes and hate and all that stuff, people attacking each other and angry at each other. And he said, Jesus said, Love your enemies. 
For, you know, like things like forgive. It was beautiful. It wasn't preaching deep, deep or anything like this. It was just like, let's not be like this. Mate, the backlash. To have practically naked singers singing at a Super Bowl with kids there is no problem. Having advertising, which is many times was very demonic in some of the stuff that they would advertise there. They had no problem. No one would say a thing. They put something about Jesus. Backlash. To attack them. Why would you allow such commercial? Why? Because we've allowed, to, we've allowed ourselves to bow down to their bullying whenever we speak about Jesus. So now, it's like, oh, you put an advertisement about Jesus? Like it's a big deal. Because we've let it become a big deal. Because we sat in our corners. We are the light of the world. We don't hide. We shine. We make, he makes sure that he puts us on a hill so everybody sees it. That's who they are. That's who they belong to. Why? Because they're going to see our good works and they're going to glorify our Father which is in heaven. How? Because we're openly talking that it's a, because of Jesus. That's where they would know which, which Father to glorify. Because they know who we belong to. Because we're not ashamed about saying it. Um, I'm going to skip. I'm oh, just kidding. It's just one page. <clears throat> Real quick. I'll go 10 minutes more. How much do I have? Yeah? Is that okay? 10 minutes? <laughs> cool. Thank you. All right. 10 minutes, okay? Don't hold me to it. 10 minutes. I will aim for that. So in 2 Chronicles, chapter 16, verse 7. To 13, I wanted you to pick up a couple of things and I'll try to make that quick so I can jump to the last bits I want. And at that time, Hanani, the seer, which also was a prophet, it was like a synonymous thing to say prophet or uh, seer was to say seer. Hanani, the seer, came to Asa, the king of Judah, and said to him, because you have relied on the king of Syria and have not relied on the, king, on, on the Lord your God, hear that please, Times that are coming, the kings of this world, the media of this world, the governments of this world, which belong, many of them have given themselves up to these globalists, which have given themselves intentionally to Satan. This is not a joke. This is reality. You just have to look, which is just a little bit, some of the occult things they're doing. Uh, you have to decide, are you going to rely on God or rely on their solutions and on their because they're going to create problems to create solutions. And the solution is going to be what's going to get us. That's, what they, they, that's why the problems come, so they can go, okay, here's how we can fix the problem. Depending on what it is, if it's the economic thing, if it's a virus or sickness or something, they'll always have the solution. The solution, be careful of. Because it's coming from them. Rely on God. Therefore, the army of the king of Syria has escaped from your hand. Because they relied more on that king's, to help them fight uh, and not in, on God, then it, the solution wasn't good. The outcome. 2 Chronicles 16, 8, next verse. Were the Ethiopians and the Lu Lubim not a huge army with very many chariots and horsemen? Yet because you relied on the Lord, He delivered them into your hands. I want to say something again to you. Relying on the Lord doesn't mean you don't do anything. They still got set up for war and they went. But the Lord delivered them. Even though that army that we're going to fight was a lot bigger and impossible looking for them to win, they won. Now, we're not talking about fighting people or anything like this. I'm saying that God will still get you to do some things for Him. It doesn't look like I'm going to sit here, do nothing, and God's going to do it all. Okay? Don't get that in your head. That's a lie. Most of the times, in fact, it says in the Bible, co-labor with God. To co-labor us with Christ. We do it together. We do what we can do and He does what we can't do. Then he says, verse, I said this because of this popular next verse. Verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. He goes all over the place. It's looking. God's eyes are looking. To show himself strong on behalf of those who heart, whose heart is loyal or relying on him. He's looking for these guys. He's looking for those people that rely on the Lord, depend on the Lord, they trust in the Lord. And He's going to show Himself strong through us in this time. And it's not about showing off us, 
It's about He can use us to be strong through us to help these people. I've said this before, I think here, I'm not sure, where the time was coming where they were, these people saw visions of the future and dreams and stuff, and there was this repeated dream or vision that they've seen of different people saying the same thing. Where they've seen like family holding hands together where there was no food, and the, and the mother grabbed because it was a time where there was chaos, what was going on, whatever it was, whatever the timing was, I don't know. But they couldn't get food anymore. So what happened was, the mother came, brought a pot in the middle of the table with the spoon inside, the big scoop. The plates were set out, the kids were there, the husband was there, the mother was there, and they prayed and gave grace and said, thank you, Lord, for the food we're about to have, and there was no food inside. Thank you, Father, for the food we're about to have. In Jesus' name. They open the pot and there's food inside. This is where you look at the Bible. You look at when they had something, like they had the, the, the bread and the fish. God did something with it. They gave they, what they had. Listen to the participation. They gave up what they had to help. So the Lord did what they couldn't do, the multiplication. You get it? So when they had money, because Judas was the treasurer, you need a treasurer because you have money. He had the money for the movement, the ministry. But when they ran out of money, or when Jesus and Peter and, that, and John were away from the other disciples and the treasury, we don't know if it's one or the other, when they asked him about taxes, he said, go to the... Peter, go fishing. The first fish you get, there will be a coin inside the mouth. And the coin was enough to pay for their taxes. So when it's not there, God will do what is impossible. When there's something there, He wants you to use it. Including you, your hands, your feet, your voice, your Facebook posts. Maybe stop. I'm just eating a burger. A goodies burger. Look. What is going on? It's no problem. Do that. But if every post you have is, now I'm at... <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out stuff. You know, Instagram, Facebook. If that's all we're doing, what are we doing? Say something about Jesus, dude. <laughs> He's going to save them. When the time comes, they're not going to look at your photo and get strength out of it. Is that true? They're not going to get you going... Someone, you know, you girls got, you know what you're doing. If they're not there enough, you just inject enough stuff. I'm just kidding. But you do, but just be careful of it. You're injecting chemicals in your body. Just don't hurt yourselves because of the insecurity that the world has put on you girls that you have to look a specific way and you're not good enough. So you have to keep doing stuff to yourself. The world's against you guys. The world is against, the spirit of this world is against Jesus. It's against you finding who you really are and your worth in Christ. So you're walking free from the world. Even though we're in the world, we're not of the world. We don't get influenced by it. We become the influence in it. Even if we're at school and all our friends are going, you got to go and do some TikTok videos and showing some stuff. No. I don't sell cheap. Prostitutes show their stuff. I'm not a prostitute. I'm a queen. I belong to Jesus. You understand? Find your worth in Christ. And then help your friends find them. So, and I'll finish here. Oh, no, I'll finish this passage. <laughs> I'll jump a little bit. Then Asa was angry with the seer because he's telling the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Don't be angry at me. If you want to, if that's what you need to do, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. But just take him some of what I said. And he was angry with some of the people. Uh, so, some of the messengers that God's going to bring up to help you in the times that are going to get worse... If you're not liking what they're going to say, you might get angry at them. Be careful that you're not getting angry at God's messengers to help you. Okay? They mean well for you, and they are hearing from God, and they want you. And it doesn't sound good. And in the 39th year of his reign, Asa became the king, diseased with his feet, on his feet. And, he, and his ma malady was severe. Yet in his disease, he did not seek the Lord, but the physicians. I'll leave that to you. And I'll finish with this one. Two, two Timothy with two passages. 
2 Timothy 1, 5 to 7. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwells first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, I am persuaded in, uh, is in you also. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you. Guys, I'm saying this to you. Stir up the gift of God which is in you. Who's doing the stirring up? Is it God? He doesn't say that. He said, I remind you, stir up the gift that is in you. You do it. Get disciplined with the Lord. Get back into giving yourself to the Lord. Uh, For I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Do you hear that? He didn't give us fear. So what is Satan going to do? Satan does the complete opposite to what God does. What does Satan give? Because God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, what does Satan do? Gives us fear. Why? Because fear helps you not make wise decisions. Because it torments you. I'll read it. 1 John chapter 4, verse 16 to 19. And we have known and believed that the love of God has, uh, God has to us. We, be- we believe that what the love that God has for us, to us. God is love. And he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that you may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so you are in this world. There is no fear in love. So if you're feeling fear, what's happening? You're not abiding in him who is love. That's how you know. You don't condemn yourself. You go, oh, the reason I'm literally petrified right now is because I'm living in the flesh right now. I'm choosing to walk out of who I've become in the spirit. Because that's where fear can hang out and do things. And that's how you know. This is how you know the alarm bell to go, ah, that's why this is happening. And you don't condemn yourself. You just go, ah, thank you. And you switch. And you go back into the spirit. Just choose to. That's how you do it. You just choose to. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear has torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Amen? I'll finish here. Sorry. I just feel like I need to do it justice. Please forgive me. I'll have two more minutes, okay? I just feel like I'm doing, I'm doing wrong by God, okay? I know I want to honor man as well and stuff, but it's really, really finished here. Matthew chapter 11, 28 to 30. And then two more passages, only one line is there. Come unto me, all you who are labor and are heavy laden. A heavy burden, it means. I will, and I will give you rest. This is what Jesus said. Take my yoke upon you and lean on me. And learn from, of me, sorry. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So if you're struggling with what you're seeing happening and the threats of wars and rumors of wars and all that stuff that's going on, which again is going to get worse, some of the things, he's telling you, come to me. Okay? Don't forget to come to him. And John chapter 16, 33 says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you have peace. What do you have in Jesus? So if you're not feeling peace, what's happened? You're not abiding in Him. You're choosing to more function in the flesh, where there's no peace, real peace. In the world, you have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. And the last one, John chapter 14, verse 27. Jesus is again speaking and says this, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. That's massive. My peace, not Buddhism peace, not the fake worldly peace, real peace, unshakable. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Amen. Please stand up and we'll pray. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Do you usually play? I'm just going to uh, ask you to close your eyes, please, as we close up. For those of you that have not received Jesus, if you haven't started a relationship with Jesus, I'm not saying if you believe in Jesus, that's a different story. The devil believes in Jesus too. I'm saying a relationship with Jesus. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus and you want to start one, please put your hand up so I can see... 
And I'll connect you up with the guys here so they can talk to you after as well. Put, put your hand up, guys, if it's you, if you want that. Maybe you all have one, so it's okay. But if you don't, put your hand up. Your heart's beating fast. That's a good thing. And for everybody else, just say, Lord, I'm yours. Lord, I'm yours. You have not given me a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. You have made me a light into this world. Use me to shine your light for you. I don't want to hide. I'm not going to be ashamed. Use me. Strengthen me. Let my faith increase to show you off when there's a need. In Jesus' name, I am yours. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let me pray for you. Go for it. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, I just thank you for everybody here, Lord God, everybody watching. Anyone watching, even if you didn't, uh, even though you're not here, if you were saying, yes, I want to start a relationship with Jesus, the Lord is alive. He heard you. You don't have to be here. He heard you and He can be anywhere, anytime. So He's there. He hears your heart. And I just ask for anyone that's there, uh, start researching more about who Jesus is message us message this church here if you're watching from here the live stream message this church them I want to know more about Jesus I want to grow my relationship they will send you stuff they will send you a message they will lead you to a website you make a step if you if you walk make steps towards the, him having a relationship that's how it is you don't just say it and not make steps so please make steps for everyone here and everyone else watching that's a believer father I thank you for them I pray every distraction, every lukewarmness, every casualness in all of us that doesn't make us firm and full on for you, let it be broken and destroyed from our lives in Jesus' name. That we will go with all our heart, soul, mind and strength in love with you and love our neighbor as ourselves in Jesus' name. Lord, thank you, Father, that uh, as this time comes, Lord God, that we build on the rock and become unshakable. And when fear comes, it flees because we've been perfected in your love. I thank you. Say, Holy Spirit, I'm your apprentice. Train me in all the Lord's ways. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, guys. Now, praise God. If, if someone needs prayer about anything, I'll spend some time here for if you want to come for prayer as well, okay? So thank you guys for having me. Bye-bye.